Tim, let's just start with with pre-season. You've got one win from your four matches. I know it's nothing about that. You know, it's all about getting ready. But how did you feel it went? Pretty well. Obviously, the, the first game um, in Cardiff was pretty obvious. We, we ran out of gas, um, but we had a good start. You know, we played well. Um, and then the other games, uh, two and three, we could have won, I thought. Uh, we played well and, and got finally got what we deserved uh, the final uh, game in Sheffield, but uh, very positive. I think we're a lot further ahead than we were last year. A lot of guys are eager to learn, willing to work, and it seems like we're all going in the right direction. One thing I've noticed from preseason is you seem a very quick team. Is that something that you have done deliberately? Do you want speed this year? Because early evidence seems that you are very quick. Yes, that's, uh, you know, in order to win, I, I think. And D, obviously, you know, we've got to have guys that can skate. Um, and we've got to get them in shape as, as quick as possible. I think the way it's set up this year with one last forward, um, I really got to focus on getting guys in shape as quick as possible. And practice today was hard um, and they're they're willing to work and uh, definitely speed is speed kills we think and hopefully it, it works out I've gone on a lot about this but you you mentioned one less less forward 19 man rosters as a coach do you think that's going to be difficult I mean I look at the weekend you lost a, a couple of guys Sheffield lost the load on, on Sunday night do you think you're going to have problems being able to at some point maybe put out three four lines I think it's going to be a challenge for everybody. I think it's um, in order to win this league, a lot of good things have to happen. I think you also have to have a little luck. Um, but I think it comes with preparing yourself in the gym, coming to work uh, and coming to practice and, and playing the right way and playing hard. But uh, then it just comes up to kind of a flip of a coin. I think having our team stay healthy is huge, but it's, that's also the same for everybody uh, in, the, in this league. So um, it's important that we play the right way on, on and off the ice in the gym. Take care of yourself, be a pro, and hopefully uh, hopefully things work out. You've had some, some big crowds already for what effectively were preseason games, but it starts for real on Sunday against Dundee. I wonder how excited you are to, to be doing it, you know, for real in a league game after so long away from the sport. Well, with oh, fans, should I say? Right, with fans. It's been uh, it's been a long time, and uh, it was great. Th these four games were unbelievable, and I think a lot of guys in this locker room were couldn't believe what what was going on in a preseason game. I don't. I definitely haven't been a part of that in in Europe for a preseason game. So, I think sports makes the world go round, and uh, we're ready to get to work for the real thing uh, on Sunday. Just going back to your preseason games, how important was it to get Will Curlin that that half an hour that he got? Because Kevin Carr obviously is going to be your starting netminder. Obviously, you will lean on Curlin at, at times, but how a how important was it? And and he did very well, didn't he? He did. I think um, you might as well throw him to the wolves. You know, in Sheffield, nine thousand fans. Um, even though it was only half a game, it's it's a big game. You know, and I think that goes a long way with being able to handle pressure. You know, those goalies, uh, they, they're a different world and they got a lot of a lot of pressure. And for him to go in there um, and do his job, you know, he, he played well. And, you know, I just think that's uh, that's really good for him. I just want to end on the captaincy. I know I think in that pandemic year, you didn't choose a captain straight away. I've noticed there's been different players with A's on, I think, in the first few games. Is that something that will happen soon or will you be waiting a bit before finalising your captaincy team? I like to rotate... Um, the captain, I, I think it, uh, you know, the guys that are obviously in the leadership group will, will rotate um, and maybe have four or five more kind of get an A um, and then we vote. We have the team vote and uh, I think that's the best way to do it instead of just me deciding day one. It is just, I don't think that's the right way to do it. So we have the, the peers, um, but we have them vote when the time is right and then we uh, award the captain uh, when it kind of evolves naturally. Do you think you have a team in terms of, you know, you looking around and saying, oh, it could be him, it could be him? Are there, are there a lot of options, do you think? I, I thought about it um, yesterday a little bit, but um, I haven't dug too deep into it. Like I said, it's, uh, it's going to evolve. We're going to give guys a chance to, you know, they'll just come to the ring for a game day and have an A on their jersey, and, and, and then it's time to get the vote. But we definitely have a, a lot of leaders. Um, we'll just see how it evolves.
just finally on that, what, what in your eyes makes a good captain? Some people like to see people who shout, scream and, 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 and do things that way. Others like to see captains maybe like a Jonathan Phillips where people follow his example and who may be a little quieter. Where do you see in, in your head, you know, where do you see, what do you want to see in a captain? There's a lot of different captains and a lot of great captains that I've played for. Um, I think the best captains, they just lead by example. Um, not on necessarily on game days, on practice days. They're first one there, last one to leave. You can tell they're going 100% and they obviously need to be respected. Um, and then when they do say something, the whole room, you know, really listens and takes it in. Um, but you, you can also have the captain that's the screamer and yeller, but he also needs to be respected. So that's why I think it's best that the, the team themselves vote for it. And that way it's coming from them. This is who they respect. Um, and then we go forward that way. So obviously just first question that I wanted to go with, with um, the elite series that you've had, a little bit of a break and then coming into the league starting, um, how has it been looking at recruitment for bringing these guys in? With Some of them have been playing, but some haven't had the opportunity. How was that recruitment different from what you've had previously? It's been a lot different. You know, you have to weigh, uh, we didn't really want guys that haven't played in two years. Um, but then when, when you talk to them and realize why or what they've been doing, or if they've had an injury, um, you know, I think we obviously made a couple of decisions that guys that haven't been playing. So that was obviously never been done before. Um, so it was different, but, uh, I think we got a good group. We obviously did our background checks and, you know, I hate to say, it, but the, the pandemic ended a lot of careers. So, um, the, the market was maybe a little more dried up than, than we expected. I, I assumed, and so did Guy, that it would kind of be a uh, owner's, you know, a team market. But uh, once it got down to it, the, they snipped up the best players quick. And then it was, hmm, you know, they, there's not a lot of guys. So it was a, definitely a, a different challenge, um, but, but uh, we're happy with what we got. Brilliant. And that kind of leads in the, the latest sign and you brought Robbie in that you've had previous experience with at MK and ha doing bits and pieces outside. I mean, bringing him in with your back background checks that you do have, I mean, how do you feel him coming in from a short period of time and actually making his debut this weekend against Sheffield? He's been he's been great. You know, he I, I, we talked to him and, and I know him well. I know he's an honest guy and he hasn't been doing nothing for two years he's been playing he's been doing camps he's been actually playing roller hockey um and his mind and, and body was ready to go um and luckily he he messaged us relatively late and luckily we had a spot for him and um you know we thought it was a no-brainer and he's he's ready to go and, um and then obviously you've had a couple of weeks with the guys now I mean, how have they been incorporating the system? Of course, you've had players that have played with you previously, but bringing it in with a short period of time, two weeks, and then you rolling in this week and for the first league game, how has that been incorporated in the Tim Wallace system? Um, I think I think it's been better than than last year in terms of they're grasping it quicker. I think um, obviously there's a little different things that I that we do and we we try to um, stress to them and you know, if there's one little breakdown, then, um, you know, there's problems. So it's, it's really important that everybody's on the same page. And I think they've been really good. Um, it's been impressive uh, what we've done in, in four days with a lot of the, the little things that I won't get into, but um, I'm happy with, with them willing to learn, willing to put in the work and, um, you know, do it as a team rather than individuals. Brilliant. And then obviously with these games that you've had coming in, with it now having fans back in I mean how has that felt for you because for the longest time you know you're kind of at home waiting then you had the series with the cutouts and everything but this is the time where you've actually had the interaction that they could do with the ref decisions and the, the way that the team was playing I mean how have you managed to cope with that with the team and then also in your own performances um it's it's back to work you know it's um something that I never thought I would take for granted uh, fans watching us. I never thought that, that that would ever be kind of taken away. Obviously there's sometimes you go on the road and there's not a lot of fans, but um, to go through that mini series, which I've never done with zero fans and then back to a preseason game with 9,000 um, you know, I'm thankful. I think the guys enjoy it. I know I enjoyed it when there's a lot of fans there and, you know, I think England is starting to, or the UK 
is starting to pick up that hockey's a, a great live sport and hopefully we can continue to to grow as a as a league and um you know when people realize that you know hockey's a, a great sport especially to watch live Brilliant. And then that kind of leads into another question that I had. Um, obviously, it was re recently announced that Premier Sports was going to be the headline sponsor. So there's going to be a lot more access with people to able to watch. I mean, how do you feel for you for having more cameras, more people looking in on you and your team? I think it's great. You know, I think the biggest thing is to, to get new fans. I think um, the UK and, and our league in general has, has a ton of potential. And I think hopefully other leagues will start to realize that, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're a good league. And, you know, as long as we can attract, you know, better imports that realize, you know, this is a great place to play. It's, it's a great league. They can go to higher leagues is, the, is what I kind of root for the most that, you know, what kind of happened with, with us, kind of our best players ended up going to in our league. You know, we had guys that went to the American league, guys that went to Austria, um, guys that went to maybe the Alps league and dominated. I think that's the biggest thing, um, to help us generate great players and great players, I think uh, will will create more fans. So it's it's a great job with with the league to get this deal done, and more eyes the better. Fantastic. And then obviously with growing the league as well, you've got Morgan on a two way. Same with Jack Hopkins, who had appearances against Cardiff. I mean, how has that been? Because you had Morgan in the taxi squad for the elite series. What made you bring him back? And what do you think that development is going to look like training with you and playing those games? I think both of them um, have a lot of potential. They, their work ethic is definitely there. Um, you know, obviously, uh, Morgie had a heck of a weekend, I guess, two men of the matches. So hopefully, um, you know, if he keeps dominating down there, um, you know, he can, you know, he deserves to play up here. So he's willing to work. And then Jack, very young kid, again, willing to learn. And he's got a lot of potential. He has a tryout to make the under 20s uh, tomorrow. So hopefully he does that. But we're, we're lucky to have him and hopefully they can grow into be uh, great pros. Fantastic. And then last one from me, obviously fans are back as we keep running into each other on game day. Um, what is your message for the fans um, that are coming back? And what do they expect to see from you guys this year? The message I would give them is uh, thanks for coming. You know, I think uh, we want to put a product on the ice that is, that is exciting, but ultimately I'm, I'm here to win hockey games. And I think, um, you know, if the word spreads and they, I think if they come to one game, you know, they'll be hooked. I think hockey is the best live sport you can watch um, and how good and how much our league is improving. Hopefully that, you know, Nottingham can be, uh, you know, close to selling out and, and we're really looking forward to it. So, um, you know, we're going to work hard. That's, that's a guarantee. Um, and then hopefully we can uh, generate some wins. Brilliant. Did miss two questions out. Just realized, went ahead. Um, how was your feelings about Dundee? I mean, if you had a look at chance of the tape of their preseason games, do you see what Omar's built and are you prepared for that? Or are you going to do that for the rest of the week and have a look at how you're going to set out for Sunday? Yeah, I, I know how, you know, Pat and dug in deep and, and watched their games, but I definitely plan to uh, tomorrow and the next day and the next day and, and to get our, our boys prepared for that. And I think, uh, you know, every team in this league is going to be good. So we got to be ready for anybody. Fantastic. And then the last one was going a little bit back on um, the game against Sheffield on Saturday. Kevin got a knock, um, but he came back onto the bench and actually went into the penalty, um, took it for Kazi's um, trapezoid. Um, with the characteristics that you have of bringing players in, seeing someone come back and actually support the team and be there for them and be there Sunday as well is kind of a testament of what you and Guy are bringing in. So that must be something that you're really happy about, that they support each other and it's actually visible to see. Right. I think, um, you know, having good people helps. And I, and I think if, um, you know, everybody gets along and, and respects each other and, and, you know, no one is uh, kind of on their own page and coming to the rink and leaving early once his points and gets home, I think that spreads. And I think if everybody, if everybody gets along, um, you know, it helps, it helps everybody work harder for each other. And that's kind of what um, Guy and I believe in. And I think so far so good. Um, how do you keep the feel-good factor going at the club after the success in the Elite Series? How do I keep the feel-good factor? How do I keep it? Yeah, how do you keep that going? Ooh, good question. Um, you know, so a lot of these guys weren't here, but, um, you know, the guys that won, hopefully, I wouldn't say we try to keep the feel-good factor. I think we try to, um, hopefully, they experience what it is 
to win and the feeling of winning and what it takes to win. And hopefully that kind of spreads to the rest of the guys. Um, but you got to kind of put that in the past, I guess, from my stance, if we sit and dwell on it, then we're only kind of going backwards. So um, I haven't really brought it up to, to the team, but hopefully the guys that were here that want it realize how fun it is and to do it on a much bigger scale, hopefully they uh, kind of spread that to the team that, you know, we're, we're here to win. We're not here to hang out and, and then party or do half-ass stuff. Um, so hopefully, you know, they're here to win and they know what it feels like to win and, and that evolves. So does that in any way increase expectation over having a good start to the season so far? The fact you've come in on the back of, of winning that competition, as you say, a lot of the guys weren't there, but there is that winning feeling around the club. No, I think the expectations are always pretty high over here in Nottingham. And I don't, I don't think um, that that amps it up anymore. You know, I think, uh, you know, this team is here to win and that's what I'm here to do. And, um, you know, hopefully we, we have a great start to the, to the elite series and everybody stays healthy and we just keep rolling and, and stay consistent. The guys previously have covered your, your recruitment. One thing I want to ask on that, what is the biggest thing you're looking for from this Nottingham Panthers team this season, from the guys you've brought in, what's the one thing you're, you're keen for them to, to, to do for you this year? Other than win, of course. Right. Um, whew, I mean, it's hard because everybody has different tangibles that hopefully uh, balance each other out, but um, it's got to be team first. I think that's the, the biggest thing. I think if, if everybody is, is on the same page, doing the right things, and there's all sorts of things I could get into, but basically supporting your teammates, um, systematically being in the right position um, and, and working as a team rather than uh, the old one-on-one -on -one individual, get me my points, get me out of here stuff. I think that's the biggest thing I'm trying to um, kind of portray to these guys. Now, all but one of the weekend fixtures saw split results. Do you think that could be an indicator for the season ahead of just how tight it's going to be this year? For sure. I think last year before the pandemic, it was very, very tight. You look at the elite series, it was very, very tight. So every, every game is huge. Every game is important. You know, it, it, as cliche it is, a game in Sheffield with 9,000 fans is just as important as a game on the road in Fife on a Sunday. It's two points and uh, we got to be ready to go. It's, it, it's a different thing for a lot of these guys to play for a regular season championship. So I'm trying to um, explain to them that every game is, uh, is extremely important. And last one for me, having just the one game this weekend, the Sunday game against Dundee, does that ease you, ease you nicely into the new season? I think it um, may be a little, devil in a, a little devil in disguise. You know, I'd <laughs> like to knock on wood. We have relatively healthy guys and we're relatively rested. So I would technically rather have the, a day off on Saturday later in the season. But um, we'll take it. It's a home game on Sunday. We'll, we'll be, you know, rested, ready to go. Um, at home for the home opener, so we're excited. 